grew up in Frazee, Minnesota, home of the world's largest turkey. You probably all heard of it. <laughs> it's about it's on Highway 10, about 60 miles east of Fargo. And um, in a town of a thousand people. My dad was a house painter, my mother was a nurse. Um, and one grandpa was a turkey farmer, and the other one was a contractor, and then he was a horse trader for a while, and then uh, he cheated too many people and became a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> and my extended family was, uh, I, I noticed I had a really odd relationship with the men in my extended family because we'd have great relationships in the summer and fall mm -hmm. as long as there was fishing and hunting. I did a lot of things with the men. Winter and spring, it was awful because there was nothing to do. And, and I remember as a kid going to a family event. If you, in a community with a big extended family, you know, you get together for every birthday and holidays and everything, and you get together a lot. And, and if you're still in areas where you have a lot of extended family around, and you get together for, for things. I would notice that the women would be, tend to be in one room, the men in another. And men had two topics. Minnesota Vikings and hunting. You go into the, into the, and yeah, that's a problem. You know, it it's going to be pretty depressing. When you're a child, you wander around the house, you know, you aren't really confined to just one room or the other, so I just go, and the women were always talking about something different. And they didn't care if they didn't know what they were talking about, they'd talk about it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I was 10 years old, or it's Yeah, I know, I, I, I wouldn't share this with them. <laughs> but it's being recorded. <laughs> but there was something deeper, and I think it's, it's something that, is, that has that has affected men, and I, I certainly see it in my classrooms too. Like uh, uh, young women have a much greater willingness to speak up and talk about difficult subjects and be vulnerable publicly. Whereas as men want to know what they're talking about before they talk about it. And you can't learn about something if you won't talk about it until you know about it. Right? That's a real problem. And, and then I started looking at what, what's going on with, because my dad would withdraw from discussion. When he'd have a conflict, he'd just withdraw. This is terrible for relationships, right? If you can't talk through problems. And it, because as a marriage is a conversation. It's an extended conversation that you just have to keep renewing day after day. Because conversation literally means to turn together. In a marriage, there's all kinds of things pulling you apart, and you have to continually pull together. And if you have one person who just turns away, right, that's a bad marriage. Children know that. His dad, my grandpa Emmett, his response to conflict was to get really angry. You know, as you get older, you start thinking back, what was going on in my family? Well, my grandpa would get angry. So my dad, the oldest son in the family, his response was to turn away, to avoid it. Because you have two responses in that situation. You either become angry yourself, right, or you turn away. And there's got to be a better, there's got to be a way of handling conflict without avoiding it and without making it worse. <laughs> 